three, two, one. You are listening to KDUX Web Radio, broadcast live from Richland College in Dallas, Texas. We are the voice of Richland College. Views expressed on this show are my bang's own, unless otherwise stated, and do not reflect the opinion of KDUX Web Radio, Richland College, or the DCCCD. So, <laughs> it is Halloween here, folks. As you can see, there's a skeleton behind Orlando, and we a, some go- special guests a ghost in front of him. In the studio right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome. That's the... Um, it's my demons haunting me. You know? that's, that's not a demon. That's a dean, man. We have some cordial... We have a cordial relationship. That's nice. Anyways, <laughs> welcome back, folks. It's uh, it's Thursday. It's 3 o'clock. Flashy Club Radio Hour in full effect. <laughs> season 7, episode 6. Here we are. You know what's so funny? is This is our sixth episode. Last fall, we did a total of eight episodes. What? And half for like audio only. So we're crushing it, I got to say. We're, we're doing pretty well this semester. This How is fall. that even possible? <laughs> yeah, your bike's on. Your bike's on. Okay. Uh, hey, Mom. That's the problem. I told him to turn it off. Um <laughs> How's it going, Dusty's mom? Welcome back. Dude, don't talk to my mom. It's kind of <laughs> weird. Oh. Rip. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> welcome back, folks. So, in the midst of midterms week, uh, everybody's a little <laughs> frantic, everybody's a little crazy. Uh, Orlando, how was your midterm experience in my class this morning? Oh, so I, uh, I went ahead and designed my tombstone already. <laughs> you know, that's how bad it went. <laughs> no, 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 it was, it was good, it was good. I actually think I got 110, 120, something like that, you know? Uh, we'll see about that, <laughs> we'll see about that. Um, did the fire drill in the middle of testing, did that hurt you or help you? Um, it doesn't matter. It was, uh, my success was inevitable, so, <laughs> of course. Everybody gathered around uh, <laughs> during the fire drill, because uh, I was like, listen, if you want to consult with your fellow colleagues during these eight minutes, um, I'm going to let you do that. And nobody could find you. Everybody's like, where did Orlando go? <laughs> no, where it's because is he? there was one specific girl that came up to me. She was like, Orlando, Orlando, can you tell me, can you explain this to me? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, actually, that was the actual ethics exam, and he failed. Because oh, he cheated. well, <laughs> um, cheating, more like helping my fellow students. That's ethical. Exactly. <laughs> it is. All right. And of course... Dusty, your midterm is tomorrow. Are you prepared? <laughs> yep. I got, green, I got a green book today, and that's all I'm going to do in preparation. <laughs> Dusty, you're right. Your that's mic good... wasn't on. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, you. <laughs> it's on now. It's because uh, Orlando's is picking it up. Um, hey, uh, I'm looking forward to reading all these midterms. I get to see if my little birdies will fly from the nest or plummet to their hmm. death. Hit me with the tombstone. All right. Not literally. Not literally. <laughs> Uh, rip, rip, rip. Well, uh, rip my homes, hopes you know, and dreams. <laughs> there you go. Halloween, folks. Um, it's oh a time God. of myth. It's what a time of legend. Look, see that? It's just a time quit, of folklore. Just quit jiggling it, dude. <laughs> I'm excited, bro. Getting jiggy with it. I'm excited right, for this time. So we're talking about myth and yes, legends. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. From myth Philosophy and Club. What was, the, what was the discourse like? Yeah, should we do the recap? We were, we were agreeing. Agreeing. For the most part. I was told there was a lot of religious discourse, a lot of yes, talk there about was. There was one gentleman God. who was pretty religious, and he uh, he was playing the apologetic for us, and it was, it was fun. Yeah. But, no, I think we all agreed at the end, so. Well, what's interesting what, what is that... What did you agree on? Hold up. What did, what did you agree on? What did we agree on? I don't remember. <laughs> I remember. We agreed to disagree. <laughs> what, Hon- what was it? Maybe? Honestly, fr- from from what I recall, uh, yeah, it, it, did, it did ultimately wind up in agreement, but um, there was some confusion over... How to put this? The role of theology, because what was fascinating to me, and this is to your question, Dusty, we we went right to a, a discussion on theology, but you know, it was the topic was myth, mm. and so I think people were were quick, and you know, rightfully so, um, to sort of uh, equate the grand myths or the grand narratives with a theological narrative, especially because they involve you know creation stories, and so the the, the topic really became you know. To what extent is theology as an example of, of myth um, somehow uh, perhaps uh, perpetrating, <laughs> how to put this, perpetrating certain, t- um, I guess, uh, false myths, false facts within the myth versus <clears throat> providing people with meaning in their life, mm-hmm. uh, you know, as a way to, again, establish customs and routines and therefore values in a life. Uh, people were agreeing that that's what theology does. But I think people were questioning whether or not that's, um, I suppose, uh, acceptable because people got a little political, which was interesting. Oh boy! Yeah. Whoopity whoop. And t- towards the end, we went back to myth as you know what we're looking at, Dusty. Myth as mythos, myth as narrative, myth as story. 
Um, you know, and I try to explain, you know, theology is just one example of this. And I, f- I feel like Tim Sullivan, uh, shout out Tim Sullivan, was, was doing the same thing. He was taking the same approach. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so we could, we could catch you up on the theological backs and, and forths of uh, the conversation. Um, but it would be fun, I think, also to kind of push beyond what we talked about today. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's more broader pastures. Of course. Which, which religions did you guys talk about? Quick though, Christian. was, it, was it primarily Christianity. Christianity yeah. um, no, some people brought up Buddhism, which I. Oh yeah. yeah, that was a good. That was a good point they made. I liked it. Yeah, that's where it's at, boys. <clears throat> yeah. So, so the the point was this: that um, hmm. ultimately, uh, and, and here's again, it was supported, and it was also criticized, uh, and in a very healthy and a very uh, again a mature way. So what are in my? With the uh, <laughs> the um, the people who are propping up myths in, in the theological sense were people who are. Again, trying to say that, you know, without necessarily supporting any given religion or any given narrative, um, people value that narratives are there because, and I believe this was the VP of the Art Club's point, that um, people long for not just meaning in their life, generally speaking, but people long for direction. People long for order and structure. <clears throat> and the best way to begin to adopt a certain kind of routine, especially when you're younger, is not necessarily to take in information or raw data and process it but it's to hear it through a story so it was actually the vp of the psychology club. you're right that's my bad psychology and, club. and that yeah she said that essentially <laughs> like the purpose of these myths or rather these narratives is to have purpose or to get purpose from it and i think that's that's what you can ultimately tie to religion to say that they have the moral purpose and or like a lifestyle purpose of how you should live your life to to live a happier life you know yeah and so i kind of i made the point to say well if we're looking at it from this existential view i guess we can justify religion by that basis to say well if yes. they choose to give that value then that's them as long as they're not hurting others yeah and are you sure we're broadcasting yeah we should be okay so this wait I know we're recording. I believe we're broadcasting yeah. live. Yeah, my mom says she's just getting nothing. Oh, Maybe no. it's her fault. <laughs> Here, I'll try to get on my phone. Anyways, what were we talking about again? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about myth. We're encou- encountering technical difficulties. All right, so um, this, this, should, this should do it. Are we fixed now? Uh, it says streaming live up top. Perfect. All right. We're in there, folks. Okay. Welcome back. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to uh, to whatever you didn't hear. <laughs> Welcome back. Anyways, I think we were streaming live on the audio, but not mm-hmm. the TV. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, now you get to see our wonderful faces. You get to see the guests we have in studio. We have uh, Skeletor, <laughs> and um, we have uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost. My grandma. Wearing an American Eagle shirt. And we have Orlando here. Um, <laughs> so, so anyways, uh, yeah, the other side of it, too, I think that was brought up was science. Because I, I remember asking the question, you know, is science a myth like theology in terms of it provides you with a story that, you know, allows you to consider details that may impact the way in which you live and how you live and how you value yourself? And people were kind of on board with that because science is, again, hypothetical, just like religions are faith-based. Mm. Um, but mm. I, I, I kind of wish we'd gotten more into the core of what mythos is. Because, uh, again, this was my topic that I, I, I suggested. Um, we voted on it six times and it finally won, so I was very <laughs> happy to have the discussion. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, more specifically, I'm concerned with the role of narrative as just a structure by which human beings understand the world and themselves. It, it, by, by, by myth, again, in that Greek sense, that mythos, that narrative, I contend that that's the only possible way to interpret experience if you're a human being. And so, again, theology, science, whatever, whatever the case may be, these are examples of how humans are narrativized, narrativity, so to speak. And so uh, when I think mythos and I think legend, especially the old legends, and we were talking – that was the other thing, Dusty. We talked about uh, Greek theology and mythology. Sick. That was the other religion, um, polytheism of the ancient Greeks. That's what I like to hear. Um, and, and so <laughs> <clears throat> it, it seems as though uh, those are examples of human beings using their narrative imagination to develop stories that provide a meaningful template that you can impose upon otherwise natural chaotic environments in, in nature. And humans have gotten really, really good at doing that. And, and I contend that there's really no other way to possibly interpret your life, the lives of others, but in terms of a story. Hmm. Dusty, your thoughts? Maybe you could share them on the microphone instead of on the telephone. Sorry, just making sure my mom knows where to look. <laughs> um, but Tell her to wear sunglasses if she's looking into the camera. I find it interesting <laughs> that, they, that they jumped um, from 
one story being religion to the other sto- other story being science instead of the other story being philosophy because I feel like philosophy <sighs> applies a That's much a better way of uh, narrativizing a human experience than science would. I feel like people don't, you know, follow science as tenets in their life. They <clears throat> follow philosophy, which uses elements of science yes. to practice. So I think it's kind of strange that you would say you live by science. <laughs> That's I a think great they point. Were, as opposed uh, to religion. I think they were just trying to compare and contrast something as arbitrary as religion. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> to something like science is supposed to be more factually based. But then they're saying like essentially we have theories which aren't necessarily absolute truths, but they're the best thing that we have at the moment. And that's to say, well, even something as um, something like science that's supposed to be absolute can be arbitrary as well. Yeah, I think that's fair, and, and that is where it was coming from. Um, and, and, and so you know. Uh, not necessarily critiquing that discussion, but I also I, I agree with your point, Dusty. It's it's just curious that philosophy didn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but you know I also think it's this: science uh, presents you with um, hypothetical facts, but you know scientific quote unquote facts um, are facts themselves a story. Is two mm. plus two equal two plus two equals four? Is that a story? Yeah, How? I think so. Definitely. It's the story. It's the story of. Two individuals meeting with two other people. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, oh, you can really man. narrativize anything. I, I think, think that's the right. key. Yeah. Is that for a human Definitely. being to grasp two plus two equals four, I don't think it's just, you know, again, data input. I, I think the, the person on some level narrativizes even something like an equation. Because a human being processes anything over time. And time is a condition. Time is narrative in a certain sense. Temporality is, is what allows for a story to unfold discursively. So is is kind of narrative is just the <clears throat> is basically providing purpose or something, you know? And so if that is the case, I mean I think math in general is nothing but purpose. It's like equations are for a reason. I mean Okay, that's interesting. It's pretty broad, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but how do you but what teaches you to value math? What's the story of why math is valuable? Well when we apply it to the real world, I guess, applied math or applying it to science like physics and whatnot. It helps uh, define hmm. things in what you could say is a more acceptably object, uh, obj- objective way so that you can, I guess, build upon yeah. – I, I, I guess I should there say it breaks, it breaks concepts down mm-hmm. into more objective parts so that you can use those parts to rebuild something completely different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, keeping that in mind, let's, let's deepen the context a bit here. Um, if you are, are, are learning math or you're studying for a math exam, whatever the case may be, I'm sorry, I just chugged the coffee and I got the, the hiccups. Um, <clears throat> Can you make them over there and burp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm stalling for time. No, so it's like this. Uh, so if you're, you're taking a math test and you look down, and it's you. It, it, who, it, listener, put yourself in, this, in the Is position here. <laughs> Is it me you're looking <laughs> for? Uh, you, in your context, in your life, um, whatever, Orlando's life. Um, okay. <laughs> he's, you know, 37-year-old uh, college student here. Dallas, how old are you? No, 60. Um, <laughs> Come on, get it right. Well, the thing is this. The only reason you're looking at that equation, 2 plus 2 equals 4, is because on some level you, you value the, the, um, the knowledge that you're trying to acquire by studying it for a variety of reasons. Maybe you need to do well on the test. Maybe you want to major in math. Maybe you're interested in it. But you looking at that 2 plus 2 equals 4 basic equation, it should probably be way more you know, sophisticated than that. I've never taken a math course on the college level. Um, I didn't have to. I went to school, uh, which was not on this planet. Um, that... Uh, it's, it's not as though in an isolated sort of segmented fashion you could just say, yeah, 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's a, that's a story or that's not a story. It's that there's always a human being coming into play, interpreting the information and relating it back to their own individual context. So even something like a math equation or a piece of, of knowledge is a part of your world, of your story, of what Heidegger calls your worlding. So I'm just not so sure that anything can escape outside of the uh, the net, so to speak, of of narrativity. Um, that's what makes things valuable. So so even raw facts can only be understood as valuable within a more narrativized context. Hmm. Emphasis on the text. Yeah, and and like objectionability or objective ability, whatever. Objectivity. Yeah, objectivity. Gracias. Is <laughs> it's it's real. I'm Italian, but it yeah. doesn't. Like matter does it to, to the human experience? <laughs> objectivity doesn't matter because it only matters as much as you consider it to. You can ignore any kind of fact in your life, and you could take in any other fact. I uh, like like the facts huh. still exist. There are still basic fundamental facts of of anything. However, it's completely up to you as to how you interpret them. So yeah. so facts are really only interpreted, or um, facts are only 
important Relevant, yeah, yeah. When, when someone narrativizes them because there are also facts that we don't know. Now, there are things that we don't yeah. know that nobody knows and that you that someone won't know until they interpret them and they narrativize them. I think that's that, that's a great point. I want to kind of push that further. And um, and Orlando, you're going to have something to say on this too, I think. Uh, <clears throat> so on the one hand, that that sounds right to me. Everything you said sounds accurate, which is to say that, uh, again, um, the facts versus the narrative and, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, how does that actually spell itself out in real time? And, and what I mean is this. You said, you know, the facts exist. Um, that's a fact. The fact <laughs> is the facts are the facts. But... Some facts, or you're saying all facts, their value depends upon the value to which you are willing to ascribe to them. But what about the fact of things like death? Can't you just say that, you know, the fact is you're, everybody's going to die, including you, which means your story's going to end. Is that fact automatically valuable? for any, And if somebody doesn't realize <clears throat> the value of, of their impending death, is that person wrong? Or is that person totally in control of the, the values and say, listen, I don't value the threat of death, and so it's not going to impact the way I live. Is that well? Is everybody scared of death? Yeah, you don't know. Nobody put it. Yeah. Does everybody life? love life? That's uh, essentially kind of what you're asking there. I mean, it's uh, nobody. I don't think every. I mean, I don't think everybody values everything the same. Yeah, yeah. It's like consider like living in chronic pain. You that life could could mean nothing but a life of horrible pain. Yeah, exactly. and so death seems like a sweet embrace <laughs> to you, and that's a, a lot of people commit yeah. suicide due to cr- due to chronic pain. Yeah. So can you say that yeah. without a smile? On your face? <laughs> I, I would love to. And I think I think ultimately value is simply just a human construct, and that, like how I think Dusty was saying earlier, it's just n- facts are facts, but it's the values dependent on the individual. Facts literally do care about your feelings. <laughs> It just seems like uh, well, well, no, I think the value care about your feelings. The facts don't give a fuck. Like, if, oh, sorry. Oh, 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 don't give a, don't give a Jack, thunder duck. I'm sorry, Jack, get in here I'm quick. I'm so sorry. Don't I give forgot. a thunder duck. <laughs> Keep it moving. Quack on the police. Yeah, he's put a quack there. Like quack. They don't give a quack, <laughs> dude. We need to do that. Quack. <laughs> Anyways, um, so uh, I, uh, I I want to say this too because I, I like what you're saying. I like what you're both saying. But I mean, let's push this to its ultimate limit here. If every single facet of human experience is interpretive or hermeneutic, um, which means that everything that a person comes across in their perceptions, they integrate into their story to whatever extent they're, you know, trying or, or, or not trying. Jack's growling. But um, I will say this. Uh, <laughs> Did you say the F word? That, mean, that, that means things like, um, that means things like, you know, uh, well, it might mean there's no such thing as a, as a pure fact. I mean, you said before, objectivity mm. is something that isn't really accessible if everything's interpretive. Mm. So can you ever divorce a fact from a value if you <sighs> admit that values change? That's tough. So, so something like death remains the same. And actually, I would argue it doesn't. I think the very concept of death has changed a lot over the years. Read Foucault, Birth of the Clinic. Um, but I, I will say this, that uh, assuming that the facts don't ever change... <clears throat> But your value of the fact changes. Can't you then say that, well, then the fact does change if you can't separate the fact from some sort of value quotient? Changing the value is changing the fact. Think, the facts absolutely do change. Like, th- like over time, well, facts have definitely changed. Like people thought, I think people thought that people believed as completely factual that, uh, that like either the earth was flat, that the stars didn't exist. Then, <clears> then like the moment someone challenged it, it was shut down because to them it simply wasn't factual. But, but, was, it was, but was that it was a, a fact? It wasn't a fact. Or yeah, was it? it wasn't a fact. It, I, I, I think it facts... wasn't a fundamental but it was a fact to them. I think that I think that it's like important to draw a distinction between a fact and like a fundamental objectivity. I think because you can believe in a fact, and to you, it is completely a fact. And in every facet <clears throat> of your life, it is factual. But there is something more objective outside of your life yeah. that renders it completely okay, different. So, so I think you're I think you're, you're making a good point there. But I think there's a distinction there in between val- value and facts. You know, I think facts is like an ob- object truth. It's not something that that you can just simply say, oh, that's what it is, and I believe it, and that's a fact. That's an opinion. You know, and so like it's to say, well, is the color black not black? If somebody that's colorblind and sees maybe red and they see gray, you know, they'll believe for a fact that it's gray, but it's still red. Yeah. And so if that is the case, you know, I think you're getting at a really interesting conversation here. It's like, where do we draw the distinction between a value and a fact? You know, because then we can say things like, oh, well, certain things that we don't know, we may believe something about them. But then to what extent is the sun hot? Or to what extent does uh does the earth have a a core that's that has you know different kinds of metals and so on and so mm. forth you know what I mean so there's certain things that is just that are just black and white but there's other things that are are certainly arbitrary yeah 
Because you don't have to like value the fact that the sun is hot. You don't have to value the fact that the earth has a molten core because it has no real effect on your life. Or you can choose to value it and believe that fact. Well, yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Do you have to value anything? Not really. Well, you just be a, kind of you just, just be a complete nihilist <laughs> and just live <laughs> in abject nothingness. Oh, but but don't get me wrong. You can have values, but other. I mean, your values can change. You can value a relationship one way and not so much later. You can value certain things not at all when you were younger, and then later when you're older, you're like, you know what, I do value. So you, it's it's not that you are operating like a nihilist with no values, but it's just that. You know, if you're free to change the value of something, that suggests that you're free to never value it at all. So are all facts, you know, up to us to value? Or are th- is there so. something about facts that are undeniably valuable? I mean, people would argue life. <laughs> like, I think a good question to ask is, like, to of what all that we know is actually a fact. Like, what can we actually call a fact? Let's take hard. What yeah. is actually an absolute truth, you know? Are there any? And so that's where, you know, if I go on top of a, of a building, I'll fall down for sure. That's a fact, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then let's say, oh, is gravity real? Is that a fact? Yeah. Exactly. So, you Hypothetically. Know, <laughs> exactly. That's, that's, that should be your next phenomenology workshop. Time to strip the facts away and start oh. building from the base materials I, that, again. I would love that. By the way, shout out uh, Dusty, who, uh, Orlando, he was actually able to make <laughs> the phenomenology workshop. Yeah, man, I have say. a thing called a job. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know. And guess who's the new philosophy club president? <laughs> hey, <laughs> it's okay. I understand. You can do yeah. that. <laughs> My third one this semester. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> right. So I... Um, it's the triumvirate. <laughs> the triumvirate. It's a great word. All right. So I, I, I love the question then that you posed there, uh, Orlando, because it, it does seem as though um, the facts themselves... And I, I bring this up and I'm, I'm, I'm harping on it because it's very anti-traditionalist. It, I mean, we, we're talking about these giant, you know, myths slash religious stories, grand narratives, Christianity, Greek mythology. Um, but, but those, uh, I mean, how to put it, those are just examples of people trying to interpret the facts in a way that renders them valuable or significant mm. or meaningful. Yeah. Um, I'm just not so sure that it's possible to identify any sort of fact, quote unquote, that is that we come across in a way that isn't through our own human experience, which, which is to say that isn't through the sieve of interpretation. And so if interpretation is, you know, the freedom to value and, and uh, you know, disvalue things accordingly based upon our own interpretive context, it really, it really renders the question, um, is absolute truth just a fact or is absolute truth something of a value? <clears throat> and if it's of a value, can you call it absolute in a way that isn't archaic? Or dogmatic. I think values are not absolute. I'm on fire. So therefore, values can't be absolute truth. Yeah, because because a value is what is comes is what is is what comes through the human seed. Yeah. And a fact a, a fact is what you put it is what you put in there, and the value is what comes out. Exactly. And so I think facts are absolute truths, and values aren't. Okay, but. Okay, because, you know, Orlando, we're studying, um, in my ethics class, we're studying human rights. And it's, it's you know, that's been our emphasis. So <clears> we're studying a lot of uh, scholars, again, like Feinberg and people along these lines, who argue of a, of a primacy of rights or a rights-based society. And in the, especially for the dogmatic liberal, the idea is that rights are unequivocally valuable, inalienable, as I believe the term. And so that means that they are to be held to the highest of steam and their value is never to be questioned. It's to be encouraged almost intrinsically. Um <clears throat> And so is that is that in fact the case? Well, here's the thing, though. Um, I feel like with morality, it's it's just simply a value set. Yeah. And so if it's a value set, value then there's values. no absolute truth. But when we're coming to something with the natural world, is it as arbitrary? You know, and you could argue definitely because I mean, what do we really know for to be truth? But I think there's there's it's a very different way to come kind of compare. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, can we compare something like morality to the physical world? Is there an absolute truth in one or the other? You know, I think that's the kind of questions that we should ask if we're going to talk on that. Okay, that's a hot question. I like that. Well, and you know, we, there's been some responses in the tradition. Ooh, responses. See, so oh, you look sorry. at the modern Very traditions excited. and. Things like materialism, you look at somebody like Thomas Hobbes, you know, 1600s, and, um, and he says, uh, the natural world determines the moral order. You know, because if, you, if we can get at something like, again, animal instinct or, or, or uh, just what, what quote unquote natural instincts or natural impulses, again, natural comes from nature, then nature itself, in a way, is encouraging a certain way of living. You know, he's talked about things like the law of self preservation. Um, you know, that's what's natural. And, Morality that goes against or tells you to ignore the law of self-preservation, you could argue, is in fact, uh, ironically, immoral. So you think of something like 
Christianity, which says turn the other cheek, mm-hmm. you know, be charitable, be generous. And then you look at something like the law of preservation in nature, which says, mm-hmm. you know, only the strongest survive, only the fittest survive. Um, those seem to be Oops, contradicting so. myths. Um, the thing there, what could possibly be more interesting out there to what I'm saying? In so, here? like, remember, because people are passing my. I was trying there. to see if you had a Bernie shirt. Uh, <laughs> Bernie 2020. Um, anyways, <laughs> you were gonna say something. Oh, oh, um, no, I forgot. Oh, no, because like the question that you're getting at there is sort of what's the best way to live life? You know, like I think that's ultimately kind of the question that you're getting at. It's the ultimate Just, philosophy. Yeah, question. yeah, and so. Couldn't you say that's a value question once again? I wouldn't. But, but <laughs> so if that's a value question, then I mean, I just have a hard time seeing what it has to do with once again the physical reality. Because what are you basing your values on? Well, I mean, your physical reality, but yeah, that's you're, the you're basing fact. it on entirely on your own sense, senses of experience. Are you? Or don't you inherit traditions? Don't you inherit these myths? But like those traditions Christ- were built off the, the senses and uh, understandings of their surroundings. You could also choose to abandon them. Exactly. Well, here's the thing. Can you? And this didn't. We didn't quite get to this in the meeting, but I wanted to. Um, mm. you look at something. Look at a look at a narrative that has a, a a strong staying power. Again, Christianity. I mean, what is the first commandment of that religion? Hitler was raised in a Christian family. <laughs> <Okay>. Ouch. <laughs> this message brought to you by. Uh, we'll plug it. At <laughs> when the world turned. <laughs> Um, nice. <laughs> look, there, I'm there, put that as a quote for the next there uh, philosophical ten, post. There uh, are ten <laughs> commandments, and it says, "If you can only obey one, obey this one." And it's, "Thou shall not worship any other gods," which you know you can argue is tantamount to saying, um, "As soon as you start considering other narratives, other religions, you're sinning." Mm. So you you really kind of it's kind of locked in there, and I think that's certainly helped its its again its its, its establishment, its staying power. Um, so there, are, and the same thing with science. Science is like, look, we've undergone a paradigm shift. These are the new facts, <clears throat> and if you walk around claiming to believe in the old science, I mean, you're 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 wrong. You'll be laughed at. You'll be ostracized socially. So I mean, it's easy to say theoretically, yeah, you can you can not hold true these these narratives. You can you can uh, abandon whatever tradition you've inherited. But how does that play itself out in your life? Now you're going to abandon your family because maybe religion's important to them. Maybe, you know, th- that's a sticking point. You refuse to marry somebody because you don't want to convert. I mean, I mean th- these, are, these are the ways in which it cashes itself out individually in your own personal context. And um, so, I mean, th- these are why these, these questions are important. I mean, they're fun theoretically, but how does it actually work in, in your day-to-day oh, life? No, they don't work. That's the point. Um, because morality is a value set and we are individuals. And individuals I, oh, we get it. You have a job. We don't work. You work. I get Whoa. It. No, what are you talking about? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> um, but no, no. I mean, we're, what we're talking about in class versus like the community and then the individual. I mean, totally. that's, that's, an, that's a value set that's trying to answer the question, how do you live your best life? And I mean, I think those are two different topics when we're talking about the natural reality. I mean, the physical reality versus kind of a moral thought or a moral, what is it called again? Moral, not conviction. What is it? Right. Position? Position, yeah. We're talking about moral yeah. positions. I mean, that's, I think those are two, two completely different topics. So you, you believe thoroughly in what's known in, in philosophy as the, uh, as the fact-value dichotomy. You think there are facts, you think there are values, and they're different. Interesting. <laughs> to some extent. Uh, <laughs> what, about, what do you think there? Oh, Dr. sorry, my... Uh, my mom said she wants to get you a salt grass gift card, and she asked if you're married. <laughs> That's where we learned that maybe an available, available Ooh, hot single in your area. Dusty's mom, stay on the line. Uh, once the program's over, I'll <laughs> oh, no. phones are lighting up. No, I am not um, married. Um, yes, Dusty, I'll eat at salt grass. Uh, Nancy's about to be your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Papa, you can call me for Oh no! Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, this is great. Um, Cut Orlando's mic forever. Yeah. Manzi's excited. I can see I, it in this stage. I'm, 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 so, I'm sorry, sweetie, but your your son failed the midterm. <laughs> uh, oh, no. I'm joking. Anyways, let's go. Let's go eat at Saltgrass. Um, <clears throat> uh, I will accept all gift cards. Absolutely. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> So so, but anyway, Dustin, I, I'm I'm curious. Do you believe that you can have, pe- bless you, Jack? Uh, do you believe you can have facts bereft of values? Because because if they consider, please consider this, Orlando. If if a human, if in order to be human, everything that you learn, everything you experience, everything you perceive, you don't just perceive like a like a mindless vacuum. You you mm. take when you're looking at two plus two equals four. You're not just processing two plus two equals four. Two you're four. saying. You're like two plus three, four. This is interesting, or this is confusing, or this is boring. 
There's always a sentiment. There's always a mood. There's always a human element to every single thing you come across. So mm. everything is tinged in meaning and, or okay. value. Wouldn't you say? So here, I still don't so know what agree. question you asked me because you immediately addressed, addressed Orlando afterwards. I, I agree with what you're saying. Like, um, I, I kind of want to just, I'm not, I don't know how to explain this to you. Um, so is it, Welcome to my world, Orlando. So is it like, oh, awesome. <laughs> so I feel like, let's let's talk about art first for a second here. Okay. Let's just say, okay, there's a painting. There's a painting with certain, um, I guess, certain compositions of colors and shapes and so on and so forth, right? So the fact is, is that, yes, it's composed of this certain aesthetic. That's the fact. But how okay. people interpret the art, that's the value. Hey, we talked about this but yesterday in the phenomenology. Exactly. Yeah, we, totally. Uh, we talked about the painting. I think I, I keep forgetting. It's like Jesus Christ in the Wilderness or something. That's by, right. And by so, Kramskoy. and so, essentially, what you have is something like it is composed of those things. That's an almost like an absolute truth. That's the fact. That's what it's given. But when's like how you perceive it, whether you think it's beautiful or you think it's ugly, that's that's the value set. And I feel like the fact of this life, if we want to be simplistic here, um, is that we all live and then we all die, right? And so whether you believe that you should live as long as you, as as possible or as whether you should live a happy life or you should live however that's the value set. Okay, okay, I think that I agree with that too. But but Orlando, I mean so as you said the facts are that there are colors on that tapestry. What do you think of that? Don't you have an opinion? Like, like, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, like, yeah. So, I mean, I think we're just asking different questions here. I mean, I think that's, I'm just trying <laughs> we're talking to, past each other. I just think I'm trying to distinguish like facts and values, but I mean as to yeah. like if I think the question you're kind of asking, are values, are, are values important? And to oh. that, I'll say definitely, yes. Oh, no, I agree. I'm saying is this, is it possible to ever for a human being to get at a bare fact or a brute fact? Or every time a human being encounters oh, anything, you're saying it's, okay. yeah, it's tint. Because we can talk about the facts no. theoretically, but, but even then, it's like, the only reason why we're talking about these facts is because they fit into a bigger story or a grander narrative. I don't think there's a way that a human could ever come to that because okay. cause all, cause all the yeah. facts are derived through exactly. the senses. That's what so I'm trying to say. Exactly. No, could no. be completely different. For, for some other kind of species yeah. that is the same for every one of us. So if a human can never encounter a pure fact, why are we saying there are facts that don't also have values? How can there be pure facts if humans can never encounter them? How are they real then? Well, well facts only have human value. That's what I'm saying. Well, if a tree falls down in the forest and no one's there to see it, did it fall? No. Well, did it fall? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll say it didn't make a sound. Well, did it fall? No. No, it didn't oh, fall. No, 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 it doesn't fall until the night. next day you see it, like, that's on the that's ground. That's kind of what I'm going to say. Is that what? Tree, Unless, until tree. you, until you perceive it's Schrodinger's tree. I'm sorry, that's <laughs> insane. Okay, well, maybe Orlando, not, maybe until not, you perceive it, how can you say it fell? What's the status of a fact? I mean, to be fair, there are, like, subatomic particles that literally change when observed. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point too, Orlando. Uh, or rather, uh, I mean, it just, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how. So essentially, truths or things don't exist unless we we see them. Is that that's the kind of the point that yeah. you're getting? At. I yeah. mean, it's a fair point, but I like what what foundation is there on that? You know, like, like let's just like let's say that there's something that we haven't yet to discover. Like maybe say there's another planet with aliens on it. So you're saying they don't exist until we find them. That's kind of the the logic there. Because how do you define oh, existence? How well, do you because, define like, existence? What, like, how does that process through human life? If if there's a civilization that no one knows about, but then, if, we're who talking, cares? if we're talking about a, oh, that's a value though. If we're talking about existence, do they not exist? Well, you don't know about it, so okay. So it doesn't become so to you, a, it to doesn't you, become a fact to because you, there's no one to process the information. To you, it doesn't exist, but. The, don't they still exist regardless? Well, th they exist to them as their what facticity. The heck? They okay. don't exist to, okay. uh, to us because so we then, haven't been able to so perceive So then to them, them. dance so, puppets, wait, dance. So if then to them they exist <laughs> and they have a value set, then they do exist. Yeah, they exist. Okay, but they then exist. they exist. They exist to themselves. They exist, so they, they exist to themselves. But they don't still, exist to themselves. Any, is still anything within. that hasn't I'm talking them. about reality. I'm not yes. talking about whether humans perceive it or not. I'm talking about in reality and existence as a whole. In reality, then, then sure, objectively, <laughs> by every objective these, the sense, here. they <laughs> exist, exist as a fundamental part of life, but they are not a okay. fact to a human because at not no a, point I'm not saying do they, to do a they human. process them. I'm not, look, I'm yes, not, of course they exist okay, if they can okay. process there things, then if we're they agreeing. recognize their own existence. Then we're agreeing. Okay, so like the point is this, is that I'm not, when I'm speaking of facts, I'm not designating simply to humans, I'm just saying fact as an absolute truth, as an in an existence.
then that's, then that's what I'm referring to. Yeah, huh. the, yeah, the absolute truth that something exists that somewhere. we don't know of. Exactly. Yeah. Well, if we don't know of it, then it's Guys, not ca- true. Kalen, Kalen, oh, Kalen, Kalen I mean, wants F- to land. Okay, fine. Professor right. Scoggins wants to land. You guys are gonna kill me. I know. He's gonna come with the finishing blow here. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm just wondering <laughs> what, <laughs> what you guys mean by um existence. Good contribution, Kalen. Well, okay. Existence, the 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 being of the being of taking up matter within a space. There you go. <laughs> Okay, I like no, I like that. I wasn't expecting that definition. That's a, well, good, that's a very, that's a very concise <laughs> definition. I like. I that. only exist because I process myself. Hey, take part is boring <laughs> and it's trash. Oh, I'm sorry, you keep saying words. I said, uh, I said uh, fudge. I love fudge sickles. Yeah, me too. They're delicious. Um, s- my, my thunder ducking good times. You better watch your mouth. <laughs> Listen, I, I I think you guys are getting at a look. I'm both sorry. both of what y'all are saying is is uh, definitely I think um, on the money given your various perspectives. And uh, okay. but I do think that there's a way to but synthesize sure both your positions. No, no, I, I think <laughs> no, you're both I'm late, I'm late. you're both making um, points that I think are are still complimentary. Um, again, I need to now. I have to tell you a, a story of how I'm going to unite these two points. <laughs> and maybe you'll care about it, and maybe you won't. That's up to you. Um, so so it's like this. Uh, you can have uh, because again, think of something like the Big Bang Theory. Uh, so again, Bazinga. nobody. Oh, oh God, with please. The Big Bang. Oh, bare naked ladies, shout out! That's the band that recorded the song. I'm not we just randomly this. shouting out. We know this. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, how to put this? Nobody was there to perceive the beginning of of existence. Obviously, right? And this is so. Uh, this is such a um, again a source, a wellspring of origin stories and creation stories. Is where do we come from? Because nobody was there to perceive it. So, ideally speaking, again, idealistically speaking, things happened even though we weren't around for it. Nobody was there to perceive it. That allowed us to again be alive today, to exist today. Uh, what is the status of those events? Now, again, depends on it depends on the narrative that you subscribe to. So, if you believe in a, uh, again the theological creation story, pick a religion doesn't matter which one. You're going to have a certain understanding of the quote unquote facts. If you're more of a scientific bent, then you might have a different understanding of the quote unquote facts. And for the record, science and religion aren't necessarily at odds by by any means, in my opinion. I mean, the Big Bang Theory is also just a creationist yeah, story. That was, yeah, that was the, that, that's the idea. Is that it's just another myth. But um, it, it claims to be based on evidence, whereas other things claim to be based on faith, but it's hypothetical status, calls that in the question. The point being is this, that it seems as though if you want to talk about facts as existing in like a void or a vacuum, which is to say a time where humans weren't perceiving them, I think you have to understand that you're just speculating. Yeah, they don't yeah, exist as facts. Doubt. If, if, doubt. There's, if there's nothing to perceive it, then it doesn't exist as a fact. It just exists. True, yeah. That's the idea of the narratives and the mythos. So the tree that falls in the woods that oh, okay. nobody, no, no human hears, but maybe a squirrel hears. Then, yeah, it was processed through a narrative. Oh, golly, gee goodness. No, tree fell can, squirrels, can squirrels tell a story? Uh, <laughs> I assume in their own minds. I mean, I don't have, oh, I'm not exactly a squirrel gosh. neurologist, so oh, I don't know if they have that kind of big thinky. I don't think okay, they do. I think I'm going to stop saying facts. I'm going to start saying exists. No, I keep keep it's pushing. Easy cop it. out. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I think a fact uh, ultimately we kind of just designating it to say that it has to be processed, and, uh, and yeah, that's kind of how knowledge works in general. So, yeah, because facts. Here's my point: facts are derivative of perception as well as intelligence, and they're they have to be proven. So, yeah, yeah they have exactly. to exactly. So, to some degree, proven because proven facts have been disproven as well. That, that's why there's always the hypothetical because the story always goes on. I'd say accepted rather than proven. Point being is Could this. you not do that and right into that. the mic? I'm going to come in there and I'm going to kick you in the that throat. That was Orlando, dude. There, no, I've watched you do it. You I didn't. watched you put the mic in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You're disgusting. Anyways. I'm failing. Is that a trip. fact or is that a value? <laughs> he processed it, so. It's, the, the idea is this, that facts are derivative of, again, human experience, human <laughs> consciousness, you might say. And if it's impossible to be conscious without interpreting something in a value-laden way or a value context way, then I just don't think there's any such thing as a brute fact. I just don't see how it's even possible. And and that calls into oh, here's the thing. It's not that I'm calling into question. I'm not saying there's no such thing as a fact. I'm saying that all facts have a value quotient. That's all I'm saying. No, that makes sense. Which means that they're open for debate. Which means you can debate the facts. That makes sense in terms of their significance. <laughs> Don't just start agreeing with me now. No, 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 because <laughs> I wore them out. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, I, I kind of just I'm saying like facts are ultimately just knowledge that is known 
kind of to a spe- like to specific specifically to people. So I mean, based off that kind of definition, there's no real argument there okay. because they're based off a of value dichotomy, like how you said. But here, here here's a counter argument that you might appreciate. Um, I tell you a story where I say, uh, "Hello, Orlando. Yesterday I flew to the moon and back." Okay. Well, is that a fact? <laughs> he can he can either accept it as a fact or dis- or exactly. say exactly. I don't believe you, Professor Manzi. I don't <laughs> think that you really flew to the moon and back. So, because he could then rely on evidence to uh, to to say, well, no, um, it's not possible to fly. So your story is false. And the, <clears throat> the evidence only matters to him. It's up to you to to process that evidence and say, you know what, you got a good point, or just say, no, I no, I did it. <laughs> I was there for it. I if, know. If I went up to the to the roof of Thunderduck Hall and 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 I said, I hear, I heard the facts, but I don't value them. Away we go. Is it going to go well for me? Uh, you know, you're probably not going to get a lot of appreciation from Ben Shapiro. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but you know, there's a Trump rally downtown today. <laughs> oh no, that's a nightmare. Yuck. Shall we uh, attend? <laughs> yeah, dude. Let's go for it. Let's, let's do like a do like Eric Andre. Let's wear our let's wear our Republican ghost Republican costumes, guys. <laughs> oh yeah, ghost costume. with the with the holes in them. <laughs> You're on a roll today, Orlando. Very <laughs> Jeez, hey, uh, Mexican get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> you would not get away with it actually. That's what you would the, expressly not get away with it. That's what the it. costumes for, dude. <laughs> they would find you. I think he has a better chance of getting away with it than we do. What's in those eye holes? What's in those eye holes, boy? Look at me been there. Those are the blue eyes. <laughs> Don't look Aryan to me, boy. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you uh, you do a great impersonation, Jack Fletcher. I'm joking, <laughs> joking, Jack. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> anyways, okay. Uh, where were we? Not joking. I feel okay. like, I feel like we've really gotten like as far deep into the fact <laughs> knowledge hole as we can. Yeah. Oh, it goes way deeper, I know, folks. I, it goes so much where, deeper. Where does it go? To, I just, where, to where we're not just arguing in circles. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to get off on a because t- I do want to return to the to the topic of myth, and I want to save the last seven minutes so that I can perform rap god in its entirety. <laughs> oh, okay. um, but uh, are you actually going to do? No, it? of course not. Um, we don't have the copyrights. We don't have the copyrights. You don't need copyrights if it's a cover. Come on, let's freestyle, man. Go ahead. You do. You first. do. Don't you? If you want to play the, the music, then if it's a cover, let's do it. I'll do it a cappella. Yeah. No, go. Like we're all doing a circle. Yeah, well, like first you want to just freestyle for 15 minutes? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. No, because our first man's... No, no, let's do it. Come on, come on, come on. We, ah, our, our, our audience wants us to talk about mythology. About philosophy. About mythology. Welcome <laughs> to the philosophy rap. I think that it, philosophy <laughs> is cool and man's he's a rat. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. You know, because he's all about the cheese, you know. I'm <laughs> telling him, please give me a hundred on my test because I don't want to stress. <laughs> Nobody deserves A's, see? <laughs> You're all lazy. What? <laughs> okay. You can't phase me. Okay. So You're going around. crazy. <laughs> there you go. Hey, that's a derogatory uh, term. Uh, um, <laughs> all right. Uh, Let's talk about legend. We should, we should like, make I that a segment. About, I feel like there was talk about legend. legend. I do want to get the legend. Or, it's a good sorry, movie. I feel like there was like, like a concept that, we, that you should talk about legend in the philosophy club because that was part of the prompt, but oh, I feel yeah, like no one actually not. talked about it. We legends. did not talk about it at yeah, all. Yeah, we're really going to get to it. Seriously, yeah. point, we yeah. didn't. We didn't even mention it in like, the discussion to begin with. Legends are what make history interesting. Legends. Heroes live forever. What is a legend? But legends never die. What is a That's from the Sandlot. What is a legend, Orlando? What is what is a legend, Orlando? <laughs> no, Orlando. Oh, okay. oh, Orlando's the legend and Nancy's the myth. Is that the joke? Okay. No, I didn't say that, but I'm glad that you. Realized. I think you you literally made that joke in the last podcast. <laughs> no, you said I'm the legend, and I was like, you're a myth. Anyways, okay, that's anyways. Thanks. Um, yeah, and then Dusty congratulated you, and you both had a good laugh at my expense. <laughs> you know it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's talk about. So when I have in mind legend, I mean like folklore. You know what I mean? Like legends. Like legends. You mean just like myth? <laughs> Wait, well, so here's the thing: is 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 a legend, is a legend similar to something like a theological myth? Huh. Um, is there a, is there the legend of Jesus Christ? Could you huh. say that? I'd, you know what? Is I'd, he legendary? I'd, I'd say I'd say absolutely, he's legendary because he appears in different religions. Like he appears in in, in Islam. Uh, he's like just generally considered makes a like cameo, a, like a cool dude. <laughs> a even even in religions that like don't praise First him as cameo. the son of God, they they acknowledge you know Jesus Christ kind of a cool dude. Yeah, yeah, big ups, cool. big ups, Big J. That's what's up? What is the oldest legend you know of? Um. um that's a great harmony, define, guys. Define, yeah, thanks. Define, thing, define like oldest, uh, most ancient, most ancient I, in history. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> I, w- I would probably say um, like stuff from the poetic era. 
Yeah. And the pros out of. Well, but do you, do you guys, I mean, do you have in mind certain, partic- here's my point. Do you, do you have in mind certain particular legends, like the legend of Bagger Van, you know, something like that? Um, I was thinking, I don't know, the how in, uh, no, that's part of a, a, a mythology, though. Frick. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's, that's the point. I mean, is, well, there's a serious overlap. Is, is it yeah. identical? There you go. That's a good point. How do you distinguish them? So uh, here's the thing. I think you could talk about the legend of um, Paul Bunyan and huh. his blue ox. I was thinking that, too. Now, um... Was there such a person as Paul Bunyan? The answer is yes. Uh, did he have a blue ox? The answer is no. Um, what he would do was he'd be on the uh, northern border. I'm trying to remember this correctly. He'd be on the northern border of America, and there'd be um, Canadians who would try to cross the border. Uh, and um, his job would be to protect the border by killing them. And because the Canadians were identified as blues, they would say he had blood on his um, blue blood on his axe what? but the Dang. accent for axe sounded like ox so he had a blue Killer. he had blue blood on his axe came to be he had a blue ox and that's the legend of paul bunyan there's also <laughs> like a george washington chopping down the cherry tree yes yeah, something like that oh, so, yeah. or, so da- or davy crockett doing anything well here's the <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah how he died is so uh it's it's so embarrassing he what he hid under the bed for three days and then he until they found him and shot him before he starved I think that's how Davy Crockett dies in the Alamo. He still dies at the Alamo, though, so that's, kind of a cool way to go. Now, that's legendary. That's what, see, that's what I'm doing, zombie apocalypse. <laughs> well, well here's, here's the thing is that it seems like legends and, uh, are a type of myth, are a type of mythos, insofar as they're stories, and <clears throat> similar to the ones we just told, they're stories that could be derivative of facts, um, but you would never refer to any sort of religion as a legend. Mm. The legend of um, Christianity? I mean, because mm. it, it implies that the myth has run its course, Uh-oh. right? Yeah, there you go. I, f- sure. I feel like like legends are usually more isolated, or like okay. they usually have like a single moral. That oh, that's interesting. Like George Washington, Cherry Tree, Don't Lie, Paul Bunyan. I don't know if there's a moral in there. He just kills people, I guess. Um, <laughs> or I don't know if there's a uh, is there a moral to the Davy Crockett there's plant trees. <laughs> um, but it's it's more it's usually like a like a more singular narrative. While mm. whereas I mean. The Bible is a collection of legends, but they're all just strung together under the idea of God. But then I thought it was a collection of myths. Uh-huh. I'd, I'd say so then, I'd say you so could then, say it's a it's a mythology, but ooh. a mythology is like a is like a bunch of legends strung together. Well, isn't a myth a singular version of a mythology? I'd. I th- and so, therefore, are you kind of equating myth with legend? I'd say. But maybe, you know, maybe you could say you could say the legend of Achilles comes from Achilles the 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 story of the Iliad. Yeah, like the, like there's like the that. man, yeah. there's the myth, and there's the legend. Oh, I see you. Now I get it. Yeah, now you finally get with the Now I get legend. it. <laughs> oh, all right. The well, manzi, the myth, the legend. Get, get that guy uh, here. Stop. Can we cut that mic? <laughs> I wish. Can we cut that hair? <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, we can't. I'll call my mom and she'll give you one. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to need a haircut this weekend. I swear. Nice. Please don't. Please don't. I actually kind of dig it. You look like Donovan. I I don't know who that is, but um, I I do uh, I do uh, need to be able to see clearly for more than nine seconds straight, which this hair does not allow me to do. Dude, just use like a a hairband or like hair clips. You look mega cute. (laughs) (laughs) Or start like start styling it back. I'm thinking I'm gonna perm it. I'm not even joking. Wow. I might just I might just go fro with it. I'm I'm serious about this. If you do that, you show up to class like that. No. I don't know what I'm gonna do. He's a, I, I feel like I feel like it's gonna be a very polar reaction. I've been wanting to do it my whole life. I'm gonna laugh. I I, I look around. There are people who have like curly hair. I want it. Really so envious of this guy who's like in her class. And he's like, oh, I killed to have your Manzi, hair. Manzi, I I'll, forgot give, I, I I'll forgot give you a ten, I'll give you a tenner if you do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, every every little bit counts. I uh, all right. So we're running out of time here, folks. We got l- about less are than ten really, minutes left. Are we really minutes. running out of time? Eight, seven minutes to be exact. Like, That's true. We got to do plugs. Um, so before, uh, well, okay. Any final thoughts here on just Hmm. fact values, um, stories, but see this way, is it, and I guess we're all in agreement on this, but really let's put a bow on it. Um, a bow Bergdahl on it. Uh, is there, um, is there any way to understand anything outside of putting it in terms of a narrative or a story, Mm -hmm. even loosely? I'd I'd say, I'd say no, because, because, because when you take something in by your senses, it automatically becomes narrativized. True. Like there's a smell. I smell it. It smells like this. And, and that's again. And just to bring this point home too, uh, tying it back to the phenomenology workshop yesterday, uh, phenomenology of forgetting. Um, again, your body takes in sensations as painful or pleasant. So there's automatically, it seems, a value in the facts themselves as you're perceiving them. 
I mean, you value what's pleasant and you don't value what's painful is, is the is the logic here. But then there's the whole question of what shapes your taste. So, you know, you might taste something that to you is pleasant, somebody else is painful. So is there any – so we can – like I'm saying, it goes really deep. We can go on and on about yeah, this. You could be like a hedonist and embrace the pleasure or be, I, I don't know, like a prude and, reje and reject it. Yeah, if, 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 I, if it's pleasant for me to eat pizza every meal, but then I get type 2 diabetes, I can't then say, well, I just don't value the facts of diabetes. I mean, I guess I could. Don't value the facts. Anyways, um, <laughs> can we can we quote that one? Can we so, quote that? <laughs> that's where I'm headed. Obviously. So I, I apparently learned something new today that facts are not objective truths. Facts Maybe, care yeah, about your feelings. It's crazy. Maybe the fact is facts. there are no objective truths. People used to say facts don't care about your feelings, but people uh, they do. One one dude. <laughs> exactly. Manzi. Oh. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> doesn't care about your feelings. Can we, well, can we equate Manzi to Ben Shapiro? <laughs> Please don't. Oh, man. You ben don't Shapiro. want to be associated with him? Man, I, I don't like that guy. <laughs> oh, what, what don't you like about him? Could maybe the that, flagrant Maybe that he talks for... like this and then he talks really fast and he thinks he's really smart. There is someone in Tabletop Club who actually did like a perfect impersonation of him. Really? I we should have him on. I, can't I would love it. to, but I, don't I, I wish actually remember who it was. Could he come on and dress like Ben Shapiro to claim he's him? We could say we have a guest, Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro. I'll do Jordan Peele. <laughs> hey guys, I think you do a good Shishek one. Do that, do that one real quick. Oh yeah, do your Shishek. Yeah, he does really I good. need, I need like a more, like <laughs> a more moistened mouth. <laughs> and you're, you're see, see, I'm not moist enough. I'm not moist enough. So, so like the back. Oh. Ecologists love enough. trash. Remember from enough. the movie? I trash. love the trash. This is where you should live. <laughs> Every day of your life, if you're a true ecologist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that man, I, I, I'm, I'm serious. Um, he, he's considered to be. Uh, the most prominent living philosopher anywhere today. I really love music. You gotta yeah. listen to his jokes. He's got really good jokes. Hey, let me ask you this. We gotta we gotta plan the next installment for the film series. Uh, okay, let's move on the plugs. Um, next Wednesday, so six days from today, uh, second installment in the Philosophy and Film series. That'll be three thirty p.m. to six p.m. in uh, Wichita Hall, um, the Planetarium, one sixteen. Uh, it's romantic. Hmm. It is. It's nice. So. Um, Last time we had a, it was a, kind of a quasi documentary, if you'll recall. It's called The Examined Life, where we interviewed a number of famous uh, current philosophers: Zizek, Martha Nussbaum, Peter Singer. It was it was pretty interesting, and uh, you know, I considered because so we got some suggestions from some officers, um, uh, but it's tough to get the copyrights to anything that has been suggested, unfortunately. Though I love the suggestions, mm -hmm. I can shout out Hannah Watson for suggesting a few things. But um, I was considering maybe showing the debate. The Zizek debates, but is that a film? Um, <coughs> Who would watch know, that? I, I mean, it is. It is. I mean, you're right. It is That's the other thing. To say. Yeah. However, I don't think it's it's really pertinent because it's it's not because uh, because Jordan Peterson has like a really he's kind of like a he's got like a he's kind of like a like Viper rhetoric. He's got like yeah, Cobra, Cobra rhetoric. Like that, he really yeah. drags you in. Yeah. He's very convincing with his ability to not tell the truth. <laughs> and Zizek is not. He's not a public speaker. He's not very good. He's not nearly as charismatic as Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is not a philosopher, but he's highly charismatic. So, I mean, and, and Zizek yeah. is making, like, really good points for the whole debate. He's making good philosophical points. I think Zizek buried him. For yeah, the Zizek, yeah, Zizek yeah, buried him, yeah. but not everyone recognizes that because yeah. because they fail to recognize the fact that, jo that Jordan Peterson only thought that Zizek was basing his entire philosophy off of Marx, and that was all he addressed. Yeah, <laughs> And yeah. mind you, he only read a pamphlet about Marx for, pre for so preparation. Wait, that makes sense. No sense. He's only read Marx once, and it wasn't before the debate. <laughs> yeah, and it was like his way of saying that was all I needed to read. I, I don't you know appreciate I mean? any of your facts. <laughs> I That's do good. not That's process good. them as part of my facticity. Yeah. Do me. Oh, by the way, Manzi, uh, you have my charger. So. I do have your charger. Tell me. By the way, if I try to impersonate you, it just it just make you sound increasingly northern, and it would not get any easier. The whole time it just get worse and worse and worse, That's and I make it more and more and more northern. That's until, how I sound. Until, until, until I'm just up in Canada. Eh? <laughs> 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 and there, and there. <laughs> He, he did an impersonation of you, Orlando, oh, recently. No. Yeah. It was, I thought it was pretty spot on, honestly. I don't remember it. Mine's pretty bad. I feel like I sound like that guy, uh, was it E-Roy? Or e what is it from Winnie the Pooh? Dude, what are you talking the about? Depressed, the depressed, the depressed. you don't sound like you. You just, you just kind of sound like a cutie. Oh. Like like a like in my objective facticity, kind of uh -oh. sound like a cutie. Not objective facticity is an oxymoron. i like this red, uh, whatever. This no, is. you're not. Don't lie to me. I know you, I know okay. you don't appreciate my facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, no, I don't value that. Hey, uh, let, me, let me do my plug real quick. Oh. Yeah, please. Fridays, two Dude. to three boys. That is tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> history. You guys ready for history? It's not your mama's history. This isn't your daddy's history. This is 
gritty history. I swear. Uh, <laughs> this is gritty history. I'm coming in with hot facts. I'm coming in with crazy stuff. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm doing. Tomorrow, I'm going to figure it out. Am I doing World War One or am I examining the Battle of Tudorburg Forest? Quintilius Varus, give me back my legions. And that's all I have to say about when the world turned yeah. two to three on Fridays. Needed, uh, I swear, man, Z. Needed two mics I'm for that I'm coming out one. there. I'm trying to. He needed two mics for I'm that trying one. trying to make sure you don't blow their eardrums off. <laughs> oh, they nice. need to know. That was too funny. Um, what about you, Orlando? Anything you want to plug other than Philosophy Club? Uh... He <laughs> 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 doesn't want to plug that. Um, don't come to Philosophy Club. Uh, uh, it's a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Too real, no, man. No, no, no. Ouch, sorry. What is time? Oh, I'll, exactly. I'll plug Clive Siegel again. You guys need a good history teacher? Go, go, to, go to Siegel. I second he's, that. He's I second that. He's great. Um, I will. Uh, okay, so Philosophy Club, I'll plug it. Philosophy Club meets every Tuesday from 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock in EO32. That is the Philosophy Club proper. This is the Philosophy Club Radio Hour. Philosophy Club Radio Hour broadcasts live on KDUX Web Radio, which you can access through richlandstudentmedia.com every Thursday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. where we, uh, we recap or requack, as Thunder Ducks quack, do, quack. The, um, the, uh, the meeting of the uh, Philosophy Club earlier in the week. And then we continue to sort of elaborate and go, go beyond what we discussed on Tuesday. Now, um, next week's topic is human nature. Is that correct? Uh-huh. Yes, that's right. Human nature: Are we intrinsically good, or are we naughty by nature? Naughty. I feel like there's going to be a lot of free and Dude, garbage in that. One. I feel like we need Santa Claus to come because I think he's the only one who can tell us. Thanks. Oh, I'll be there. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be. I'll be, I'll be bringing gifts. <laughs> oh, there you go. Gifts yeah. of wisdom. Santa Claus. Uh, also, um, <clears throat> something else that uh, we need to talk about, uh, Orlando. So no. we're doing another. Uh, apparently, Richland is hosting a club fair. Oh, what the... In November on a Saturday. First Saturday of November. It's a club fair for all the new prospective students. Um, I'll give you the information. I know. Hey, I'm right there with you. Okay. Uh, that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess... Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't. But hey, love OSL. Support OSL. And love, we are going yeah. to... Uh, so if you're not busy uh, the first Saturday of November... Um, you can join me. I'll be there. I, I won't ask the students okay. to be there. Yeah, I'll do you a favor. If I'm working, I'll call in sick. I'm oh. like, I got a case of the AIDS, HIV, uh, all the kinds of STDs. <laughs> do, you work, do you work at a place where you can get food? Um, no, I don't, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, well, what do you... I, well, it depends on what you want. I'll buy something or something. Oh, no, don't worry about that. Uh, but, um... Oh, I, you want to bring snacks or... Yeah, something like, or, or maybe like, I guess we can give out candy. Give out candy. I don't know, okay. something like that. Buy, buy it's not pedophilic subway. at all. Okay. Buy, out, buy out the subway, because... <laughs> Can we give out like a subway? <laughs> oh yeah, buy a bunch of cookies. Yeah. yeah. I'll ask you. Now I think about. It, I don't even know if it's gonna be here. It might. Oh. It might be at a different location. I gotta go back and look. So, I you know I'll plug something in. Why not? Yeah. Um. Perfect. So we're doing a collaboration with the art um club on the 29th, and just for you, Manzi, it's gonna be from two to three. So you hey, can make it. Yeah, thanks. exactly. You guys should come to that. Check out some cool art. I actually have, I have plans. Oh, so, oh that's messed up. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> so check out the Instagram page as well. It's ROC Philosophy Club. No, yes. no underscores. Just go. Absolutely. Give us a like. Give them a like. Check us we, out on Instagram. We need it. Hey. <laughs> Anyways, that's it. All right, cool. And uh, any, of course, shout out the um, the students who uh, are involved in other organizations oh, yeah. that routinely attend the Philosophy Club meeting. Shout out the Psych Ducks Psychology Club. Again, shout out the Art Club, shout out the, uh, of course, the Anthropology Club, uh, with whom we've merged, and um, shout out, you know, I think we've always had members from Phi Theta Kappa and NSCS oh, yeah. and the Honor SGA, HSO, SGA, yeah. Every now and then. Yeah, it's pretty cool, and um, yeah, just a, it's a great mix of students. I would say um, some of the most exceptionally intelligent and inquisitive students on this campus are in our club. So come join us, and um, if nothing else, I guess you could think about it. I was gonna do that. I was gonna try to try to hijack you. You can go for it. <laughs> I got this tagline. It's called Think About It. <laughs> nah, nah, you don't you don't you don't have to harmonize with me, dog. I was, I was, I was, Think about I was, it. I was trying to take it to a higher level. Especially note. when you're coming on Friday, two to three, when the world turned, listen to me, and you can think about history. 
think about it. I won't. I'm out. <laughs> PCRH out.